Hi, this is Gwen Peterson. I'm a certified health coach. And today I want to talk about why you might not be losing weight while you're doing our program. So um, something that happens to most of us is old habits die hard. And most people struggle with consistency. And so when I have a client that's like, when my scale isn't moving and my inches aren't moving, then we dial into a couple of things. So when I start on, we'll start a client um, of course, I work with them through week one, then we do a week one, what I call a tip call, giving them little tips, making sure they're doing everything right. We do another tip call on week four, we do another tip call on week eight until we get them to their, their healthy weight. Um, but what, what I always see happen is, well, and first, by the way, when they say, Gwen, my scale isn't moving, my first question is, how are your inches? If their inches are moving, then I don't care about the scale because if the inches are moving, I know their body is still burning fat for fuel and they're probably doing things right. It's just not showing up on the scale because the scale can encompass, you know, did you not drink enough water? Did you not eat enough lean and grain? Um, did you not get enough sleep the night before? Did you end up doing way too much in the yard the day before and blew through some electrolytes and didn't replace them? Are you constipated? I mean, the list goes on and on of what shows up on that scale, but the inches never lie. That is why you get to take your inches every single week because if your inches are moving, I know that scale is gonna catch up the following week, so you get to stay the course. So there's tip number one. Um, I should write down how many tips there are. Anyway, um, so tip number one, measure, measure, measure. And if you're a cuckoo bird like me, <laughs> During my weight loss phase, my coach kept saying, do not get on the scale every day because it's going to throw you emotionally off because it's not going to go down every day. But I always know that if I pull out the measuring tape once, twice a week, I'm going to see results every time if I'm doing the program correctly. So if you're the cuckoo bird like me, throw that scale away and pull out that measuring tape a couple times a week because if you're doing it correctly, you will be losing inches. So then... Um, if you were my client and you're like, this is not going, this is not working, my scale and my inches are not, are not moving, here is what I do on a, a tip call or a systems check. So first question, are you eating your first fueling within 30 minutes of waking up? Because when you wake up, your blood sugar is low, so the sooner you can bring that blood sugar up, it starts your metabolism working for the day and you start burning fat. Unless you are um, you have thyroid issues and you are on Synthroid and then you get to wait an hour because the Synthroid needs to um, dissolve and um, it, it needs an hour before you can put food in. So half an hour if you don't have thyroid issues, an hour if you have thyroid issues. Then from that point on, are you eating every two and a half to three hours and not going longer than three hours? Because at that three hour mark is when your blood sugar starts to drop and you stop burning fat for just a tiny little bit because your metabolism and your blood sugar is going down and your brain says, go get me sugar. It's a physiological reaction to your blood sugar dropping. So go figure, think about it. When you've gone longer than three hours, what happens? You end up in the darn Cheez-Its and you don't even like Cheez-Its, but it was your brain triggering you, blood sugar is low, go get some sh sugar to bring it back up. So that's where get consistent on your schedule. For those of you guys that have been diving into Dr. A's life book and you started adding the, um, the app, this will help remind you every three hours to be eating. So, or set alarms on your phone if you're not doing the, doing the app. So every two and a half to three hours, don't go longer than three hours. Then let's talk lean and green. Are you weighing out your meat after it's been cooked? Are you making sure you're getting the correct healthy fat? And are you getting the three servings of grain? If you are not doing these things, guess what's going to happen? What happened to me? Because I didn't know. <laughs> Week one, I'm on it. I'm measuring everything, right? But then because I am the expert dieter, I stopped measuring after my first week. And I had 50 pounds to lose. And at the end of my first month, my coach, I lost 11 pounds. And I was thrilled. But she explained that sometimes, again, results not typical, but a lot of times women that have more than 30 or 40 pounds to lose will lose about you know, 12 pounds a month. She lost 14, again, results not typical. But she said, well, what are you doing different? So I went, she did the systems check with me and I had stopped weighing out my meat and wasn't paying attention to the facts correctly anymore. So I committed that every time I was home, I would weigh out the meat after it was cooked and make sure I was looking at the guidebook and doing the correct fat 
compared to the category of lean I was choosing, and then eat three servings of green. I don't love green ve or vegetables. That's just, you know, stuff I get to get over, but I do it because it's healthy. So I committed to doing that. So guess what? Again, results not typical. Month one, I lost 11 pounds. Month two, because I got the stuff dialed in correctly on the lean and green, 13 and a half pounds. So that tells you that our program was designed by doctors based on the body and the science of blood sugar balance. So when you are tweaking the program, you're going to tweak the results. Just like me, after week one, I stopped measuring because I figured I could eyeball it. And once I started measuring, I quickly learned that I was underestimating how much protein I needed by one to two ounces. And when I had days that I should have been having two servings of, of um, fats and I was having zero, wow, I was really deficiting my body on how much fat I needed, how much protein I needed, and how many calories I needed for the day. And so that's why I lost less weight my first month and more my second month. So lean, green, fat, measure it, live it, love it. If you're one of those people that is questioning, do you measure it out? Do you weigh it out? You can use either guy. If you want to just do it in a cup, it's kind of hard to measure in a cup broccoli because it's trees and it sticks and it's bulky. So if you're somebody that wants pure accuracy, um, then you can go Google um, Optivia vegetable conversion chart and it's the weight chart of the cup chart in the guide. So that's there. So are you eating when you wake up? Are you eating every three hours? Are you doing the lean and green and healthy fat correctly? Then how are you doing on water? If you are drinking less than 64 ounces of water, you are not going to be losing at a normal rate. Your body needs water to first not be, um, uh, not be constipated. You need water to keep that digestive tract moving. You also need water because guess what? For the first time in your life, you're putting 100 grams of protein in your body for the day and it's supporting your lean muscle mass, which is fantastic, but guess what? When you've lived a carbohydrate driven life like me, my body doesn't love protein, whether it's out of the grocery store or out of a package. So if I'm not drinking water, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> that's another video. I'll be making another video on gas and constipation. Um, I have a really old one. It's way down the list. It's applicable, but I know some new things. So I'm going to make a new list, new video. So water, water, water. I did a video on water being a super highway to weight loss. So I'm not going to revisit it, but my goal is always for me to make sure I'm getting as much, enough water that my urine is clear, no color, no cloud, no no um, uh, smell to it, you know, odor. So um, that's where water is. Then the next question is: Is are you doing too much? Are you exercising to the point where you're burning sugar? Because the point of our program is to balance your blood sugar. The point of exercise is to burn sugar. So when you burn too much sugar moving, working out, whatever it is, it's going to start dipping your blood sugar and then you're going to start tweaking the results. So do we want you to have healthy movement every day? Yes, go read Dr. A's chapter on healthy movement, but we want you to be moving, but we don't want you huffing, puffing, or sweating because when you're huffing, puffing, or sweating, you are now burning sugar and that's gonna start dropping your blood sugar and it's gonna mess with the results. So kind of my answer to this, I also have another video about exercise and the five in one, but the truth of that is, is realistically, you go find me a personal trainer in America that's pulling more than six pounds a month off of somebody. They're not because it's a very slippery slope to know how many calories that body needs to support that, that exercise that they did, but how many calories do they not need so that that skill will keep moving? So it's just a scientific number. It's a very hard thing to figure out. And when you start exercising, it just by default slows it down because it's very hard to get that correct caloric intake against that exercise. So go back and watch that video. So are you doing too much exercise? And then my last thing is, is are you staying up way too late and not eating? So basically you wanna make sure you keep eating while you're awake. So Go ahead and call Nutrition Support on this. This is a really fun one to talk to Nutrition Support, 888-OFTAVIA. Um, they will talk you through this. Um, when I first started coaching, I asked because I had a client that was, a, I think it was, he was a firefighter, and he was going to be working really long shifts. And, and I said, so do I just have him keep eating and fueling every three hours? And she said, after um, nine o'clock at night or like after you got all five and one in, 
at that point is when you can either do another fueling or half of a lean. And I remember saying to her, well, who wants to eat a half a chicken breast at 11 o'clock at night? And she goes, no, that's when you go to the vegetarian guide. So Google Optavia vegetarian guide and just save it to your phone. And that's where you're going to find cheese and eggs and things like that, that you or cottage cheese that you could use. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that guide exists. And she's like, how many clients do you have? You might want to talk to your coach and learn a little more. So when people are like, I could never coach. I don't know enough. Well, trust me, I was coaching people and they were losing weight and I didn't know everything back then. And I'm still learning. So what I personally do for me, if I'm up late at night, sometimes I'll just grab another bar or I always have low fat mozzarella cheese sticks in my fridge. And I always have low fat cottage cheese um, on the vegetarian guide. You'll see two low fat mozzarella cheese sticks is half of a lean and three quarters of a cup of low fat cottage cheese is also a lean. So if you go do that late at night after you've done the five and one, you can do that in replace of the fueling, but you cannot do that during the day. But if you have any questions on that, go call nutrition support. That's where I learned that information. So those are my tips on when somebody's scale and inches are not moving, what, how I diagnose what they need to tweak and normally it's that they're not staying consistent every three hours. They're not eating when they first wake up. They're staying too late and letting their blood sugar dip because they've been up too long without eating. And then they go to bed with their blood sugar already on the decline. They're not drinking enough water. And the common, common one is not weighing out the meat after it's been cooked and getting the correct healthy fat. Comment below if this was the systems check you needed to reel it back in a little bit tighter because my gut is you were doing these things in the first couple of weeks and then you just kind of let it slip like we all do because you were losing weight and it was working. I remember one person said to me, well, I can have six Jolly Ranchers a day and I still don't and I still keep losing weight. And I'm like, how long is that going to last? I know it's not going to last. It's just because she had a lot of weight to lose. But guess what happened? Once she got a lot closer to the healthy BMI, those Jolly Ranchers didn't work anymore because it's sugar. And so you just get to realize when you tweak the program, you will tweak the results. Comment below. Let me know what stuck out for you and hope this was great information. Bye guys.